Today on Earth Focus, a Fukushima nuclear disaster in the U.S.? Dr. Edwin Lyman of the Union of Concerned Scientists on the Possibilities, coming up on Earth Focus. There's no nuclear reactor operating in the world today that is completely immune to accidents. My colleagues and I wrote the book about Fukushima to try to produce the most accurate representation of the accident. Because if you don't fully understand the technical basis for the accident, then it's very hard to come up with solutions for preventing the next one. Our book does conclude that an accident like Fukushima could happen here, and we do have the opportunity to try to reduce the possibility. However, what we were seeing in the United States in the aftermath of Fukushima was the various government officials, including the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, as well as the nuclear industry, telling the American public that what happened at Fukushima simply couldn't happen here. Uh, all of the plants that, we, that we've licensed and all of the plants that we are currently uh, reviewing will meet strict safety standards uh, for earthquakes and other natural phenomena. So certainly for the existing plants, we believe absolutely that they, they can withstand an earthquake and they can meet the high standards that, that we've put in place. When you start to say something can happen here, you're practically inviting inviting it to because you're going to let your guard down and that's the biggest danger. No regulator can predict every possible contingency that could affect the nuclear power plant. You have to be prepared for anything, but it's simply too expensive to prepare for everything. In the United States, most of our plants were designed licensed and, and built decades ago in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. They were designed to a certain standard that was considered to be the best knowledge at the time. For instance, what's the most severe earthquake in the historical record? What's the highest flood? That information was taken into account. But in some cases, the methods that were used for analyzing that data were faulty. Uh, things were left out. For instance, the impact of an upstream dam failure was not considered, but now we believe that to be a, a significant risk. The Oconee plant in South Carolina is one that's been known for a long time to be vulnerable to a dam failure that's owned by Duke Energy. There's a plant called Quad Cities in Illinois, and the river flooding could put that plan underwater, in which case the operators would have to resort to extraordinary measures to keep the plant safe. Seismic vulnerabilities is a big issue, and the most obvious vulnerable plants are those in California. Right now there's only one operating nuclear power plant, that's on Diablo Canyon. The other two have been shut down, although the spent nuclear fuel is still on site at those plants. In the central and eastern United States, over the last couple of decades, the U.S. Geological Survey has come to the conclusion that seismic risk is greater than was previously believed for a number of these sites. And so these are plants where they were formerly believed to be low risk, but are now a higher risk. There is one plant in the United States which really needs to be considered as a unique case, and that's the Indian Point nuclear plant which is only about 25 miles from the New York City border. And within the uh, 50 miles of Indian Point, there are about 16 million people. And so it's certainly the highest uh, population density around any nuclear plant in the country. As a result, it deserves special scrutiny, not just for safety vulnerability, but also for vulnerability to sabotage, because we know that New York historically has been one of the most desirable targets for terrorists, and Indian Point as a nuclear plant whose fallout, if it melted down, would be aimed directly at New York City, it has to be taken seriously as a potential sabotage target. One very important aspect of Fukushima is that it demonstrated that the hazards of a nuclear plant accident extend far beyond the 10-mile zone that is typically designated as the evacuation zone for nuclear plants. Here in the United States, the 
NRC requires every plant to make plans available for evacuation within 10 miles. If it looked like there was going to be danger to people living beyond 10 miles, there would be plenty of time to evacuate them. For some plants like Indian Point, you're talking about millions of people who have no idea that one day they may be asked to evacuate from a densely populated region with terrible traffic. And uh, I think that to rely on the ability to um, expand that evacuation zone on an ad hoc basis if an accident happens is asking for trouble. Right after Fukushima happened, the chairman of the NRC convened a task force to take a hard look at safety of nuclear power in this country. And that task force came around with 12 recommendations. So anyone who thought before Fukushima that we had no room to improve here in the United States was probably taken aback by this thick document of all the things that we need to fix. That task force report was taken by the NRC and then put through its regulatory meat grinder. And uh, as a result, some of its recommendations remain somewhat intact. Others were watered down. Others have been discarded completely. Nuclear power is just a very complex and expensive way to, to boil water. If we don't fully learn the lessons of Fukushima and incorporate them into our nuclear plants here, that we are setting the stage for a catastrophe. Simply because uh, we have the opportunity now uh, to correct some of the problems of the past. And if we don't take that opportunity fully, then, then we'll have no one but ourselves to blame when, when or if it does happen.